five things not to put in your will. And understand that I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a doctor. I'm a wealth manager. So this is neither legal advice nor medical advice. But I've helped a lot of people throughout the years. And what I've come to firmly believe is that at the end of your life, if you cannot communicate, your final wishes should be honored. So let's get started. When you're thinking about what to put in a will or what to keep out of a will, let's think about timing. Generally, wills are read about a week after the funeral. So anything that you want taken care of immediately before or immediately after you pass away need to be kept out of the will. So think in terms of two categories. Category one would be those things that affect you physically around the time of death. We can call these action items. Category two would be those things that relate to settling your estate after you have passed away, and we can call these administrative items. The first things that should be kept out of your will are those things that should be in an advanced health care directive. These are items that relate to your body. These are items that relate to how you want your body to be treated at or near the time of death. What we're talking about here is life support machines, how and when to use them and when and if to turn them off. The decision on life support machines can be broken into two categories. The first category is heroic measures, which focus on life-saving efforts that you might experience in an ambulance or in an emergency room if you're unresponsive. The second category is typically called comfort care or palliative care. Comfort care focuses on pain relief and providing a comfortable experience in the hospital or a hospice as you near the end of your life. There's a spectrum of comfort care that ranges from pain medication, nutrition, massages, music, to simply pain medication to manage the pain towards the end of your life. In some cases, you may decide to direct a medical team to remove the feeding tube and let nature take its course. If your wishes are to have a feeding tube removed, you need to make that absolutely clear to whoever it is that is going to be directing the medical team because the medical team is not going to suggest that in most cases. And it's a philosophical decision, but it's your decision to make. And removing a feeding tube is not a decision that you want to leave to your family. You want to make that abundantly clear that those are your wishes because it is a very difficult thing to do in a society that has sensationalized the idea that you killed mom because you starved her to death when in fact the natural course of nature before uh, life-saving machines were prevalent was that your body slowly shut down and you simply didn't eat. It was all part of the end-of-life process. Number two for things to keep out of your will are organ donations. Directives for organ donations should be kept out of your will because, once again, it's a matter of timing. If your will is not read until a week after your funeral, then it's simply too late to have those wishes met. You want to put organ donation directives into an advanced health care directive and make sure that the people that will be taking care of that health care directive are aware of your wishes. Number three on things to keep out of your will are funeral arrangements. You want to make funeral arrangements on a separate directive that is in possession of the people that are going to be handling your funeral arrangements. If you put your funeral arrangements into your will, once again, your will is going to be read about a week after you have uh, had your funeral, it will be too late. Number four on our list of things to keep out of your will are investment programs that require a beneficiary to be designated. These would include IRAs, retirement plans, insurance policies, 
and annuities. Designating a beneficiary determines who gets that particular asset. So in a case where you have Susie as the beneficiary on your IRA and then down the road you decide that you're going to rewrite your will and give your IRA to Johnny, all it's going to end up doing is creating confusion, hate, and discontent. Johnny is not going to get the IRA. Susie is the designated beneficiary. The IRA is going to go to her. This is why it's so important to keep your beneficiaries up to date. When your life changes through death or divorce or other events, you want to go and make sure that your beneficiaries have been changed to reflect the current situation that you're in. 25 years ago, you designated your wife Melody as the beneficiary on your IRA. You subsequently got divorced and now you've been married to Jane for the past 20 years, but you never did change your beneficiary. You pass away. Guess who gets that IRA, which is now worth a million and a half? Melody gets it, not Jane. You want to change your designated beneficiaries. You want to keep your beneficiaries current. Number five on our list of things to keep out of your will are property and other items that are better off in a trust. Use a trust to control the distribution of assets such as real estate or investment accounts that don't require a beneficiary designation. Once you take something out of your name and put it into the name of your trust, the trust will control how those assets are distributed. So let's recap the five things that you want to keep out of your will. Number one is life support machines, how and when they're used and when and if you turn them off. Number two is organ donations. That belongs in your advanced health care directive. Number three are funeral arrangements. Those belong in a separate document that has been distributed to the heirs that are going to be responsible for making those funeral arrangements occur. Number four are investment plans and programs that require a beneficiary. And number five are those assets that you have placed in a trust.